Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here. We're in my home. What are we doing here? Well, as of today, we've just launched the Mark Agnesi YouTube channel, which you guys are all watching right now. Um, <laughs> yes. Why? Well, because we have a very cool new project called the Mark Agnesi Show we've been working on all year that is going to be coming very, very soon. What is the Mark Agnesi Show, you ask? Well, it's, I've been watching guitar videos on YouTube for the last, I don't know, 10 years. And it's what I think there is, what it's lacking, man. There's gear reviews and demos and pedal demos and $500 guitar versus $5,000 guitar shootouts and stuff like that and stuff I could just not give a shit about. What there wasn't was like really good, like television content kind of show for guitar players. So that's what we set out to create. So we're gonna be doing news and current events. There's a celebrity guest coming by uh, every week for an interview. We do show and tell with a lot of them where they bring a guitar from their collection we can sit and talk about. And then of course we play a song together as well, as well as me ranting on all sorts of music related things that piss me off, which shouldn't be hard. <laughs> oh yeah, and it films right here in my home. Yeah, some of you guys have been seeing it on YouTube. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Really, really excited. Uh, we've got eight episodes coming up. It's going to premiere on November 10th, Saturday, kind of right after Guitar of the Day uh, on YouTube. And uh, as, long as, as long as we don't screw anything up, the eight subsequent Saturdays after that, for the rest of 2018, there'll be a brand new episode of the Mark Agnesi Show. Uh, didn't call in any of the big celebrity favors yet, but I've got for you guys like eight of the big up-and-comers that I think uh, are going to be the ones you're going to be listening to probably for the rest of your lives. Very, very excited about some of the guests I have coming. Episode one, like I said, will be Saturday night, November 10th. Daniel Donato will be my first guest, the master of the Telecaster from Nashville, Tennessee. But what are we doing here? For years, people have been asking me to see my stuff, go through my guitars, my amps, my rig, if you will. So what better way to kick off the YouTube channel than giving the people what they want. Here we are. This is my office slash guitar room slash closet slash everything else in our house that we don't know where to put it all ends up in here. <laughs> Forgive the mess, but come check this out. All right, the Tone Dojo, here we go. Well, you wanna just do like the sexy pan shot really quick first, John? Let's, let's see. We'll hit the Gibsons on the floor uh, where the kids can knock them over. I always find is the best way to do it. Um, then of course we've got Defender and miscellaneous things. Uh, on the rack, amps and all that kind of stuff. Let's start with the uh, guitars. Let's start with the most important guitar, which is this right here. This is my favorite guitar that I own. This is from 2007, 1957, Les Paul Goldtop. First year uh, of the VOS guitars that Gibson did. A former girlfriend um, bought me this guitar for Christmas, which was pretty cool. I say former girlfriend because she's my current wife. Uh, my current wife, my <laughs> wife, my wife Jackie bought me this guitar. Uh, it was my first real Gibson guitar. It's my favorite guitar that I own, not only because she bought it for me, but just because it's like, uh, it's the best guitar I own. It's the guitar by which all the other guitars get, get judged. I've got all this other stuff, but uh, I still think this one sounds the best. This one's been all over the world with me. It's got dirt and grime still on it because I don't really clean my stuff and the pickup covers are all oxidized and turning green. But man, it's a rocker. This one stays down a half step. Because um, uh, what I was doing back in the day, most almost everything was down a half step. This guitar just likes being down a half step. Everything else in the entire room is in standard tuning. Um, but this one stays down a half step just because that's where it likes to be. So yeah, that's the number one. But uh, let's just go down the line here. This uh, is very cool. Keith guitar. That's a 1959 uh, mono 355 reissue from the Gibson Custom Shop in black, just like uh, just like Keith's. Um, Dave Amato from Mario Speedwagon was in yesterday. First time I've ever heard someone refer to that as the pepperoni pick guard. You gotta get that, that pepperoni pick guard off of there, put a black one on. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so, yeah, pepperoni pick guard. Totally stock, everything just like the way Gibson shipped it from the factory. But just in case you need a wiggle stick, we need to have one with a wiggle stick. Um, that's cool. Look at the top on that. Look at the flame. Oh yeah. This is one of those Goodwood era R9s. So 2000, 2000, year 2000. 
Goodwood era is kind of what, like late 90s into the early 2000s when they were doing these big tops. Look at that top though. Chevron goes all the way down to the very, very bottom and all the way up to the very, very top. Color's perfect. I watched this guitar on reverb for like 16 months. And I finally sold some, some stuff. I had some money and it was like, made the guy an offer. Nobody had made him an offer. It was one of those things. I think the listing title was kind of bad. So not a lot of people were seeing it. I got a really good deal on it. Like that. Gotta have an R9. This one I did change. Uh, it's got a cream tone wiring harness in it, vintage bumblebee cap, and uh, some new pots in it. Oh yeah, 82 Karina Flying V. This one's got some stories. This guitar sat at Norman's Rare Guitars for like five or six months, just hanging on the wall, which is the longest a Karina guitar has probably ever been in the store. Why? The pickups, the Tim Shaw's had been removed, and it had like a little phase switch drilled in the pit guard here. Came from John Shanks, the producers in Bon Jovi. Did tons, sold 100 million records probably. Lots of Grammys. Um, this was John's guitar. But yeah, it had all this changed stuff, so it sat there forever. And like six months ago, my buddy Joe Bonamassa gave me a set of these Seymour Duncan custom shop Joe Bonamassa Amos pickups. They made like a thousand sets. He gave me serial number 10, which was really cool of them. Um, so they were actual like hand wound by Seymour PAF clones from a real Karina V, the one I sold him, Amos, um, which was a cool gift and they just sat here and I'm like, man, they have gold covers, what am I gonna put them in? I wish I had something to put them in. It'd be cool if I found a Karina V that needed pickups and I was like, oh, I have that one at the store. So I bought it and I put the Joe pickups in it. What I pulled out of it though, were these other kind of just signed pickups. So I called John Shanks, I'm like, Shanks, I bought your V. What was in there? And he's like, oh, Seymour hand wound some PAFs for me. Don't get rid of those, those are really cool. Oh yeah, I got that guitar from Joe Satriani, which is really cool too. So it was Joe Satriani's V, then it was John Shanks's V. Now it's my V and it's got the Bonamassa Amos pickups in there, which were a gift from Joe. And I put a new guard on it that didn't have the hole and cream tone harness, bumblebee cap in this one as well. Weighs like four pounds. My wife got me this for my birthday too. There's Hendrix watching me talk about it on Guitar of the Day. It's kind of rad. Jen photoshopped that. He, he didn't really watch it, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. Uh, moving down the line, this is a uh, 54 Les Paul Custom reissue from the Custom Shop. My favorite version of the Custom with the uh, Alnico 5 staple pickup and the P90 back in the bridge. This is kind of version one Les Paul Custom. Uh, a couple changes on this. They ship with Grovers for a historic re uh, reissue. That's not very historic. So I had some uh, Uncle Lou's waffle backs put on there, make it a little bit more authentic. Also, I think it, the bridge uh, P90 got changed out for a Jason Lawler, which sounds fantastic. Really, really cool guitar if you need something different. You know, I've got humbucking guitars, but I was gonna have a custom in mine as well. Be the one with something I didn't have. Very, very cool guitar. Uh, also, moving down. Another really fun one. This is like the fifth or sixth Les Paul Jr. that I've had. They come and go around here. Um, again, this is uh, from 2007. It's kind of that first year of the VOS, which really cool. My favorite guitar here, this gold top. This is 771624. This is 771609. So they're uh, what, 15, 15 serial numbers apart, these two guitars, which is very, very cool. Simple animal, man, but it rips. Gotta have one. It's like standard government issue. Gotta have a junior around. Uh, and then lastly for the Gibson guitars, this is another 59. 59 dot neck. 335 and blonde from the custom shop. Really, really killer guitar. Great neck. They really do a great job on these historic uh, reissue ES guitars. Um, and it's blonde. I like blonde. So I got one with a wiggle stick on one of these. So everything here is reissues kind of like 54 to 59. That's kind of my prime, prime era for the Gibson stuff. Uh, then on the rack, I do own Fender guitars. People don't think I own Fender guitars. This is a uh, Heavy Relic 62 uh, slabboard strat from the custom shop. Original three color sunburst finish. Lots of wear on it, but kind of looks right, which I like. I hate custom shop guitars that look wrong. Like, uh, you know, it's silver sparkle over pink paisley, and then it's heavy relic. It's like, yeah, you're full of shit. I just like regular standard colored stuff that looks like a real vintage guitar. 
which people always think this guitar is old. And it's like, dude, I sell guitars in a strip mall in the valley. I don't have a bolt. I don't have any 50s Les Pauls or anything like that. Yet. Not until the show takes off. I don't find 50s Les Pauls. But yeah, really cool. Got that for my birthday a few years ago. All stock, the way they shipped it from the custom shop. So I do have a Strat. And then uh, the Tally. This is a um, uh, cool uh, 52, not a no-caster, but a Heavy Relic limited edition 52 Tally that actually belonged to a friend of mine, Keith Nelson from Buck Cherry. This was his guitar uh, originally. I was looking for one of these, and my birthday is October 11th. On Saturday, October the 10th, 2015, this guitar walked in on trade the day before my birthday. It's like, Norm, come on, dude. He gave me a good deal on it. And now it's my telly. Uh, really, really great sounding guitar. Really, again, great relicking on it. People, you know, people think I, I talk shit about relic guitars. I, again, it depends on how they're done. Anything that you can do to a guitar to make it feel more broken in, dude, I'm totally down with that. I hate brand new guitars that feel all plasticky and sticky and stuff. So yeah, I get that people think it's a little bit hokey to have a guitar that's got fake wear on it and you should you should earn your wear and all that kind of stuff. Dude, people buy vintage guitars that have wear on them all the time because they're vibey. They didn't earn that wear either. They just paid a lot of money for it. You know, it's kind of the same thing. But anything that feels a little more broken in, I'm always down with. Uh, and then yeah, I do have a bass. Fender. <laughs> I do have a bass. Fender used to do all these kind of cool sales contests where like around Christmas time and stuff, like November, December, you sell a bunch of stuff and then they'd give you a bunch of, you get like a percentage of what you sold in trade. And one year I ended up with a bunch of money, but not enough to get anything I actually wanted. Uh, so I was like, all right, now's the time. So if I was only going to have one base, the Desert Island base would be, you know, reissued gold anodized guard, P base. So yeah, just in case you know, shit goes down. I've got a bass. And then I've got, uh, I also got uh, just like a rumble, a rumble 100. Just something to plug it into loud enough to get over a drummer, just in case I get those calls to do some, some slapping and popping, you know? So I got one bass. Uh, what else is on here? Uh, Dan Electro U2 from the 90s in black, because occasionally you have to play cashmere and you can't play cashmere on anything else other than this. I had one with these pinup girls on there at the store that got away. So I came home and bought that on reverb for like, you know, 200 bucks. And then lastly, Martin D18V from the Vintage Series 4, it shifted scallop braced. Really clean. If you're only gonna have one flat top when you close your eyes and strum a G chord, D18 is pretty much what I think uh, acoustic guitar is supposed to sound like. A couple other things on the rack, not important. Amps, Marshall 1974X. Hand wired, hand wired Vox AC15 that was a gift uh, from a good friend of mine Christmas a couple years ago. Tweed uh, Blues Junior, Tweed Pro Junior, reverb tank, because why buy a pedal when you could have a tank and carry an extra piece of gear everywhere. The top 500 played songs on classic rock radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheat sheet. That's the stuff, guys. Universal Audio Ox. Lots of cool pedals and stuff we don't have time to show you because this took a little too long, but you know. Thanks for watching, man. Thanks for caring. The Mark Agnesi Show is going to be premiering uh, on November the 10th, right after Guitar of the Day on YouTube, and every Saturday after that, as long as we don't screw it up through the rest of November and December. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe now. Peace.